Excuse me. What's up, guys? Back with another video and here to do another wrestling topic. Since Hell in the Cell's the night, I'm not really gonna watch it. I'll just maybe read up some stuff or what happens. But since, like I said, obviously Hell in the Cell's the night, the three Hell in the Cell matches, I think there's only two matches on the card that. I'm excited about, even though I might not watch it, and that's Jay Uso and Roman and Sasha and Bailey. And I just wanted to count down, do a countdown of of Hell in a Cell matches. Well, the Hell in a Cell matches that lived up to its hype, and uh, the Hell in a Cell matches that didn't. Five and five. So five that did live up to its hype, and five that didn't. Let's start with the ones that did. Five going backwards. So five. Uh, the Usos and the New Day, a um, modern day Hell in the Cell match. Now, n now, nowadays, it's so hard to get a really good Hell in the Cell match uh, because the the lack of build and the excitement, it doesn't really matter anymore. But this one, it felt like uh, the Usos and the New Day betrayed wins and losses back and forth for a few months and in this hell, particular Hell in the Cell match, it, this was better than a lot of fans ex expected it to be. These two teams were vying to see who the top team was on SmackDown, and they beat the holy hell out of each other. It's worth watching. It's one of the best modern-day Hell in the Cell matches in recent history, so go back and check this one out. Uh, number four, one that happened last year. Uh, a women's Hell in the Sun match. Becky Lynch and Tasha Banks. Now, this rivalry was uh, red hot. It was on the... Uh, Sasha Banks was just returning and after the whole Clash of Champions thing with the disqualification, they had to settle in the Hell in the Cell. And just like the Usos on the New Day, they beat the holy hell out of each other. I was really expecting Sasha to win this one. But, I mean, they really showcased uh, this. I mean, they put on a hell of a performance. I think this match should have been the real main event instead of that god-awful main event that we got at the end of the show, which I will get to when it comes to the worst Hell in the Cell matches. Um, but, yeah, this was really good. I really like... Uh, I have to go back and rewatch this match because it's been a while, but this was awesome to watch. And, but the red Hell in the Cell doesn't do anything for me, so I think they should just bring back the 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 silver steel. But uh, yeah, Becky and Sasha. Number three, I'd say the the Armageddon Hell in the Cell match. With uh, Undertaker, Rock, Stone Cold, um, Triple H, Rikishi, and Kurt Angle. This was probably like one of the only good matches on the card. Which tends to happen a lot. But this match really did live up to its hype. And a lot of these robberies were from, were from Survivor Series. And putting all these men together inside Hell in a Cell. Kurt Angle walked into it. Is WWE champion walked out of his WWE champion, and th this was bloody. This was violent. The most famous spot, of course, was Undertaker throwing Rikishi off the top of the sh cell onto the back of the back of the truck, which Rikishi said he still feel feels to this day. Uh, but this was incredible match. Go back and watch this match. Because uh, this was this was when Hell in Some matches actually felt important. Um, next number number two, I would have to say oof, number two Triple H and Cactus Jack. Uh, this match this was on Triple H's rise to the to the top of WWE as one of the top heels. And who better to have a major feud with and just uh, put him over as a huge star than Mick Foley? And these they there was a lot of 
of course, with Mick Foley, you never know what you got. You never know what you're gonna get, but uh, at the same time, you do. It's always gonna be bloody. It's always gonna be violent. Always gonna be uh, tags, barbed wire, all that kind of stuff. And it's hard to choose which one was better, this one or the Royal Rumble match that they had. But both of these matches exceeded their expectations, and they did recreate that spot with uh, with Mick Foley and the Undertaker in this match. Except this time it was actually planned, and it was incredible. This match was awesome and really put Triple H on the map as one of the top heels in WWE. And number one match that live up to that lived up to its hype was um, in terms of Hell in a Cell matches is Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker No Mercy uh, No Mercy 2002. Now Brock Lesnar, the next big thing, one of his major feuds second major feuds after The Rock, of course. And this was, there's a lot of personal stuff heading to this with Brock Lesnar breaking Undertaker's hand and uh, Brock Lesnar getting his, Brock Lesnar getting The Undertaker's wife involved and bringing his ex involved and he made this whole personal ordeal and making the undertaker's life a living hell and in the match the 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 focal point of the match was targeting the undertaker's broken hand and even with a broken hand the undertaker still did a hell of a job and he made brock lesnar look like more of a star going um going into this match and walking out but brock lesnar held his own and even even Paul Heyman got a little color in this match, but this match was really awesome. I love this match. This is one of my favorite Hell in a Cell matches, and not only one of my favorite Hell in a Cell matches, but one of my favorite matches of uh, both of these guys' career. So, yeah, that's my top five of the Hell in a Cell matches that lived up to this height. Now, let's go to the five that did not, and this will be pretty easy. I think this one was a lot easier than the ones that that did. But number five um, that didn't, I, God, this was hard to put in order, but Shane McMahon and Undertaker, WrestleMania 32, this match is probably one of the Undertaker's worst WrestleMania matches. Uh, I hate to say it, but I mean, I love the Undertaker. He's one of the greatest, but this match went on for way too long. It dragged on it for a certain amount of time. It was boring. It didn't need to go on that long. It was just building up to the spot where, building up to a Shane McMahon spot, of course. And it just, it was a boring match. It wasn't really exciting. It was a lose-lose type of thing in this match. And if Shane lost, he didn't get control of, WWE or Raw or SmackDown or, or something leaning into the match, but he still had control over Raw the next night, so it didn't make sense. And yeah, but I would suggest avoid this match because it's long, drawn out, and it's kind of boring. Um, number four, I'd say, God, um, number four, now this one, mm, recent. Recently, I would have to say this Triple H and Shawn Michaels Bad Blood 2004. Now, the build to the match was pretty okay. Triple H and Shawn Michaels always had great chemistry together. However, this was another case of long and drawn out. This match went 45 minutes, and it was slow-paced. It did not need to go that on that long. Maybe if they cut the match like 25 minutes then it would have been better. But there's, there was no need for this match to go 45 freaking minutes. And at the end of it, you were just like, thank God it's over. So, yeah, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, uh, Bad Blood, 2004, Hell in a Cell. Number three, 
um, God, I just had this one in my mind. Uh, oh, God, what's the match? Um, oh, um, maybe, uh, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. I didn't really see this match, but I knew from, from, the build of the match that Shawn was going to screw over Daniel Bryan. I mean, everyone saw that coming. Every time Shawn Michaels is in a big match situation as the special guest referee, someone's bound to get screwed. And this was no exception here. I mean, the um, the whole Daniel Bryan authority, Randy Orton thing was the hottest thing coming out of SummerSlam. And he kept getting screwed over and over and over again. And the ending to this match was really unsatisfying, to say the least. So, yes, Randy Orton and Daniel Bryan, number three. Number two, I'd say, um, oh, God. Uh, number two would be... Probably Shane and Kevin Owens, Hell in a Cell, 2017, I believe that was the year. And this match, uh, this time around, Shane was the babyface and Kevin was the heel. And of course, this was most of this took place outside of the ring. And whenever, I mean, it they just didn't click as well as you'd hope them to. It, in this match, they would have better matches in the future. Like last year, they had last year at SummerSlam and their match on on SmackDown, the latter match was really w done really well and was way better than this match. And of course, anytime Shane is involved, is leading up to... Leading up to a big, a big, um, stunt or whatever you want to call it. The ending was, I guess, you could say it was predictable. I mean, depending on if you saw it coming or not. But, I mean, going into it, we all knew that Kevin was going to win. So, yeah, this match, Kevin and Shane McMahon. And number one for... Hell in the Cell matches that didn't live up to the type. Bray Wyatt, while well, The Fiend, and Seth Rollins. Whoa, let me tell you something. This match pissed off so many people, including me. This is probably one of the... This is probably one of the matches that almost made me stop watching WWE entirely. This pissed off a whole lot of people. Even Roman Reigns said that this was a terrible ending to a match. I mean, it just didn't make any sense. I mean, how do you end a Hell in a Cell match by getting disqualified? It just doesn't make any sense. A lot of everyone clowned on this match after, because of the ending, including uh, Sean Waltman. Seth Rollins didn't even like the ending to the match either. I mean, you just didn't make any sense at all. Then they tried to redeem it at Crown Jewel by having uh, The Fiend defeat Seth Rollins for the title, but by then it was already too late. They already hurt The Fiend by the by the way that match ended. So, yeah. But those are my five and five. Five Hell in a Cell matches that did look, live up to the type and five that didn't. Let me know what you guys think. What matches that I leave out uh, is there a particular Hell in the Cell match that you love and there's, if, there, if, there, uh, if there's one that you hate let me know in the comment section below but don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon and be notified for uh, new videos that I do and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.